To be able to bring mindfulness to your everyday life will change your life. I was reminded of this again recently when I watched a video by Lama Lina who emphasized the importance of shifting into mindful states at least five to six times per day. So in light of this, I wanted to share with you guys three of the most potent strategies that I use on how to practice mindfulness in everyday life. Alright, we're back out here in the garden looking zen as fuck, but today I wanted to just emphasize the fact that I know what these sorts of videos are like. So there's three strategies I'm going to show you today, and then the tendency is you might watch them the whole way through and you're like, okay, there's too many to pick from, Sam, I'm already doing this thing, I'm already doing this thing with my meditation practice, now you want me to do all these things. I understand that and I get that. Too many options can sometimes lead to an action. So for that reason, I've only taken my three most potent strategies that I use with a really committed practice. And what I want you to do to actually make sure you're implementing this is to watch this video the whole way through, including the little cheeky bonus tip that I've thrown in at the end for you, a really powerful bonus tip. And then I want you to leave a comment to let me know which strategy you will be using. Writing it down will hold you more accountable to actually implement it, which is what I want for you from watching these videos to actually get benefit and apply these things to your life. But otherwise, saving the best till last, let's get into the video now on how I practice mindfulness in everyday life, giving my three best tips. Number one, mindful reminders. Now this strategy is probably most effective for beginners in meditation, but for your advanced practitioners out there who have done things like meditation retreats, I want you to not underestimate the power of mindful reminders. They're incredibly potent and can really invigorate your practice when you apply them regularly into your life. And there are many ways to apply mindful reminders. I know meditation apps like Waking Up and Headspace have mindful reminder capacities. You can use the clock app on your phone to buzz you every 60 to 90 minutes to remind you to drop in to a state of awareness or you can sort of tag objects around your house like various door handles or when you go to do the dishes or have a shower and look I could go on and on about all the different types of ways that you can use mindful prompts but what I want to talk about is the way that I do it and I, I think it's important to keep it simple because it's so easy to overcomplicate things and we just don't take action at all and we just get swamped with all these different prompts we could be doing and then we just throw it out the window. <laughs> oh man, it didn't go through. So the one that I use and the one that I recommend you use, particularly if you use a computer quite often, is to set mindful reminders onto your computer. Personally, I use a free application on my MacBook Pro that is literally just called Reminders. It's built into the software that hits me with a little notification every 60 to 90 minutes just to allow me to, to prompt me to drop back into a mindful state. And when I do this, I sort of just take a moment, I just gather myself and then just zone in to a non-dual state for 60 seconds. As little as 60 seconds is all it takes to reground myself and just to get out of the weeds of like tunnel vision of doing this one thing, then this thing, then this thing. It's like, hold on, I'm gonna pull back, I'm gonna drop into a state of non-duality and I'm going to allow that to continue to permeate onward as I continue throughout my day. Even when you think you're like a mindful guru, you know, you've been doing, you've been practicing meditation for ages and ages. Like I've sort of been in that mentality before. I'm like, I don't really need to use mindful prompts. But when I started using them a lot more after getting La Molina's prompt, man, just the impact it's had on my practice is insane. But at the same time, sort of paradoxically, we shouldn't become too dependent on mindful reminders here. Because it's sort of like this. If we're just relying on mindful reminders to get a little hit of awareness, and then it sort of has quickly diminishes off, that's not that going to be that effective. What we want to be doing is to have a hit, a mindful reminder, and then to have it sort of spark our awareness, and then we're going to try and maintain that as much as we can until the next mindful prompt. And we're sort of bridging the gap over time so that we're constantly mindful from hour to hour, from mindful reminder to mindful reminder. That's the idea of it. And one more important thing with mindful reminders as well is I know how easy it is to do that thing where you set a reminder and then over time you sort of like, you, you start off really strong and then gradually, 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 you might just like skip one mindful reminder and then the next day you skip two out of five mindful reminders and so on and so on. And then over time, you lose trust in the actual process of engaging in that mindful prompt. I've been there, okay? So what I want you to do is to really set an intention. I'm going to stick to this mindful prompt 
when it comes up, then it's actually had a lasting impact. So that's why I think keeping it simple is important with only doing this with a couple of things. Now guys, really quick, if you're finding value, make sure to like the video, but otherwise let's continue on. Number two, from cushion to daily life. This is a huge mistake people make and surprisingly they do it way too often. You go through a meditation sit, you're feeling very zen, you're very, very equanimous, and then all of a sudden you get up and you walk out into the kitchen and then what's going on at work today? What do I have to cook for lunch? What am I doing with the kids? What am I doing here? What am I doing there, right? And you lose your mindfulness. When you sit for meditation, when you've really brought awareness and concentration to the forefront of your mind, this is the perfect opportunity to sort of start bridging that gap from the cushion to real life. Because you have that heightened awareness, you can bring insights that you've taken from your meditation, from your mindfulness practice into moment to moment experience, which is why we're doing this. So it's sort of like a workout, right? You just finish a workout and you've got that endorphin release post-workout. Take advantage of those endorphins in your daily life to really augment your moment to moment experience. And then you might get a glimpse of what it's like to bring more potent mindfulness into your daily practice. And that will slowly expand and expand and expand over time to where it becomes more of a baseline function in your daily life. I've certainly found this to be the case for me. Like after my one hour sits, I'll get up and I'll really bring a conscious intention to engage in a non-dual state more readily. And it's so powerful. Number three, a mindful anchor. A mindful anchor is another one of those immensely powerful tools. And it's so simple. The idea is to have a primary object of meditation that you reliably fall back on each time you go about your day. So for me, that's the sensations on the bottom of the feet when I walk, or it could just be the sensations of breathing or the sensations of breathing in your abdomen. It doesn't really matter, but you just need to constantly be able to return back to this object of meditation. And what you wanna do with this is have your mindful anchor present. So, okay, I'm noticing the sensations of walking in my case, and then whatever becomes more apparent, Let's say a very jarring sight comes up. You see someone trip over on the street and then you start running over to them. You feel the sensations on the feet. Feeling, 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 seeing. Feeling, 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 seeing because that's come more apparent. Or maybe it's hearing. Feeling, 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 hearing, right? Sounds like a nursery rhyme. Yeah, hearing, but you get the point. So you wanna take whatever becomes the most important thing, what, be what becomes most apparent in your sensory experience through the various portals of entry. So seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touch. So this way of having a primary mindful anchor, you're going to be able to return to that more regularly to keep you embodied and grounded in the present moment, as opposed to drifting and thinking about what you're gonna have for lunch or all the crazy shit that's coming up in your life. All right guys, like I said, because I wanted to include more value for you, I'm gonna chuck in a bonus tip here. But before we do, I'd appreciate if you like the video, consider subscribing to the channel if you want more videos on science, spirituality, and psychology that's practical and relatable to help you wake up. But otherwise, let's get into that bonus tip now, which is, what if I had this insight? So maybe you've had a meditation sit like this, where you sit and you're like, wow, it's so clear now. I see non-duality, I see impermanence. It's so clear now, I can never forget this, right? And then you get up off the cushion and 10 minutes later, you've completely forgotten it and you're stressing about what's coming up in your day because you haven't been following the previous strategies that I've just talked about. <laughs> I'm definitely not a victim of this. So you've had these incredible insights and then you're hit with a challenge in your life. Maybe it's a business decision. Maybe it's taking a courageous leap and asking someone out that you were really scared of. So what you can do, and this is so simple, but I think it's so powerful, is to then ask, if I had this insight, how would I behave? If I had that insight that I had on the meditation cushion this morning, if that was real right now, how would I behave in this moment? So if I realized emptiness, if I realized permanence, if I realized no self, would I really care about what this person thought of me? Would I take this business decision? Would I ask this girl out? Now, why is this important for bringing mindfulness to daily life? Because when we then make a decision and we actually carry through with this decision on how our meditative insight would inform a decision, it gives us immense confidence in the Dharma, in our capacity to apply mindfulness in our daily life. And what that does is it makes a positive feedback loop. It's like, wow, this is actually working. I'm actually getting insight and I'm actually able to apply it. And therefore it invigorates more insight and more mindfulness, which gives you more ardor to continue practicing and to bring more attention to these small subtle things in your daily life. This is so powerful. Guys, make sure to leave a comment to let me know which strategy you will be applying. Remember I've covered four today, but I want you to just pick one at the very least and leave a comment to let me know. It would make my day to know that I have had an impact on you, that you can actually take one of these strategies 
strategies and apply it in your daily life. Now, if you like this video, I would recommend you check out my video on how to focus in meditation to rapidly access deep meditation and samadhi that will transform your practice if you aren't doing it already. Now, remember, you're important and you are seen. Love you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. See you guys.